Hey, hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joshua Bon, and welcome back to another speed paint. So, last time that we did speed paint, we covered the Greek god Hades. And so, this week, we are moving forward, and we are covering Aphrodite. So, for those of you that don't know, Aphrodite is the goddess of love, sex, and beauty. And I think fertility is also in there, but regardless, she is just a wonderful little goddess. Or big goddess, depending on where you look at her. But regardless, moving forward, I just decided to go on and start doing some more god gods and goddesses. So I've done Hades, now I've done Aphrodite. Do let me know if you want to move on to doing someone like Poseidon, or Zeus, or Heracles, or any one of them. So yeah, do let me know down in the comment section below which Greek god you would like me to do next. Um, a couple of things regarding uh, the recording of this. So... I remembered to hit record for the first general sketch out of it, but then I was streaming just a couple of days ago, and I completely forgot to hit the record button. So there's probably a solid hour of this where the footage is just completely missing. So by the time I finish this sketch, it's suddenly going to rush to me being almost completely done the very rough kind of uh, just general coloring of the whole thing. So <laughs> sorry about that. But anyways, moving on, I want to talk more about the inspiration behind this piece. One thing that I was really adamant on was using kind of more classical references. I mean, lots of people, they have a different definition of beauty and what it is. And, like, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of modern beauty and how that it's defined in our world today. And so I went back to the past to more things that are seen uh, kind of in traditional classical pieces in old statues of, of the past and in especially da Vinci's work. I took a lot of inspiration from his p pieces when producing this particular painting. So one piece that I drew a ton of inspiration from, and I'll put it on screen, uh, and I definitely modeled the face after this, although I did make my own little slight changes to it, and that would be the Lady with Disheveled Hair. I think that's the title of it. But regardless, it was a piece done by da Vinci, and it's one of my favorites to date, and it's just so perfect and wonderful. I took a lot of inspiration from that when it came to the way that I was making Aphrodite's face, because I just thought it's such a beautiful, wonderful face, and it would really capture a little bit more of what people would define as beauty back in the day compared to now, which is what I was going for. I mean, she's a Greek goddess, so I wanted to make her look how the Greeks would have possibly idolatrized her. And that is the wrong word. Idolized her. That is the right one. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, so that's where I kind of took most of my inspiration from with that. And then I did a little bit of research onto what her kind of general appearance was. And of course, being the goddess of beauty, she is incredibly beautiful. Being the goddess of kind of love and sex and all that, she also is typically defined as being quite voluptuous, and so I gave her a rather large chest. And then she was also described as having kind of typically either blonde or strawberry blonde hair. And so I decided to go more with the strawberry blonde side. Just when I started doing this piece, the blonde didn't look very good. I mean, you can see it right now. It is kind of a blonde-ish shade, and yes, it's a terrible outline of it just because it's a super, super rough kind of starting piece. But besides that, it doesn't go very well with the purple. So the color that is mostly associated with her, it, it depends on where you look. I mean, definitely red, that would be a big one, because red is often assumed with love and romance and everything. But I think this is specifically with gods. Um, with Venus, you are going to get purple. So back in kind of Roman and Greek times, purple was a color that was very difficult to get, and so it was often attributed to royalty. So you go and you look at old paintings of like uh, old emperors and whatnot, and they would typically be wearing some kind of a purple robe. And so that is what I decided to give Aphrodite here. So that's why I gave her purple. And as for the hair, definitely went with a, little, a bit more of a strawberry blonde. I'd say it's almost more of a redhead kind of thing going on, but. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. So for the shading, there were a few interesting parts regarding the shading. Just overall the face, I thought it was fine. The mouth, I notice, is very small, but then again, 
if you look at old statues, you look at old paintings, typically all of their mouths are very, very small. It seems that the people back then maybe just didn't talk as much or something. Some kind of an, some kind of an evolutionary thing that's just slowly changed over the years, I guess, because people's mouths nowadays are typically quite a bit larger than they were in the past. So, yeah, it does look a little bit weird, though. When it comes to things like the eyebrows and the eyes, I wasn't exactly sure how I liked them. They seemed to stand out a bit too much on the face, so I, I wasn't too happy with the eyebrows. The eyes, though, I think that they were pretty good. I might want to use a little bit more of a muted color, a little bit more of a neutral tone, but I feel it was better than what I did with Hades. With Hades, I drew all the individual eyelashes. It looked a bit weird, and so I decided just to kind of do a general eye line and have it kind of be a darker blackish color, and I think it turned out pretty well. Um, all around the rest of the body, I really liked the shading on the breasts. I think that those turned out particularly well, and they were quite... well, I'd say they were decently realistic. Now, one thing that I noticed, however, was that I was very hesitant on adding darker shades to things. And you'll notice I do it a little bit with the hair. Like, compared to the rest of the body. With the rest of the body, I didn't add darker shades. With the hair, you can definitely see it, especially as I'm working on the back of it. I add very, very, very dark shades of brown to it. And it, I think it looks good. It looks nice and dynamic. But then you look at the rest of her, and it's just a little bit lacking. So I really wish that at the time, I went and I made everything a little bit darker. I think I went and did the, kind of the, the underside of the breast and made it a little bit more well-defined afterwards. But in general, I didn't go up and fix up many places. So definitely in the future, I'm going to need to mess around a lot more with contrasting tones. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm going to need to work on. So for the hair, I was pretty happy with how it turned out, to be quite honest. I hated it at the beginning. I thought it looked just like the biggest piece of crap ever. However, the more and more I worked on it, the happier with it I was. And by the end of it, I was pretty content with it. Now, I probably should have added a little bit more shadow to the skin, where uh, the hair would be blocking some light, but I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Another thing that I did was just quickly go around the entire outline of the hair, and I just added a few stray hairs here and there. I'm not a big fan of people who have, like, perfect, 100% perfect hair, where there isn't a single strand of hair. It, I, I like it being more natural, and so that's what I define with as natural beauty. And so I wanted to really capture that with Aphrodite and have her just kind of seem pretty well as natural as possible. So I gave her the stray hairs, gave made sure that her hair... It's nice and wavy, but it's not super organized and braided and all that kind of stuff. Oftentimes she's depicted as having braided hair, but I decided to go against that for this. But yeah. And I feel that the shading, the arm was fine, the, the robes were fine and everything. Now, I do apologize to any of you who are a little bit sensitive to things like nudity. Um, now, of course I did expose half of her chest, but again, she's kind of the goddess of love and sex and etc. And if any of you have seen the famous painting, uh, I th believe it was by Botticelli uh, originally, and it was The Birth of Venus. It's a very, very famous painting from, I believe, the 1700s, maybe the 1600s. And, yeah, I think it's actually the 1600s. But regardless, lovely, lovely painting. And uh, it's, it's the most iconic way that kind of Venus has been portrayed. Now, Venus, I believe, is a Roman name, while uh, Aphrodite is her Greek name. But regardless kind of as she was born, and I'm not going to tell the story of that because it's a little bit weird. Um, as she was born, I believe she was kind of in the nude and born from a clamshell kind of thing. And so with that, I kind of decided to kind of embrace the fact that she was nude. And I think that the spirits of the wind came to her and they gave her a cloak and wrapped her in a cloak. And so I tried to have her be just a little bit more free with how she looked. And so it's just a little bit of drapery around her, and so that's what I decided to do with that. As for the background, I actually went and I looked up what the Temple of Aphrodite looks like, and I made kind of a 
a very small representation of what it actually looked like. Now, of course, I didn't go super detailed with my background, as I normally don't, and I don't think I usually ever will go into detail with the background unless it's a nature piece, but I, I think I was pretty happy with it. I mean, you get the fact that it's this interesting Greek architecture and whatnot, and it has some of the main details that are shown in the Temple of Aphrodite. I mean, there are the four pillars out front, and the weird kind of stone taken out of the middle the piece in the, in the top part and stuff like that, so yeah, it was really quite interesting. And so yeah, that's pretty well it. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and feel free to subscribe so you don't miss what happens next. And in the next episode of this lovely speed painting series, we are going to be moving on to a probably another Greek goddess of your choice. So do leave that down in the comment section below, and perhaps I may even do it in a different style. So do let me know what style you'd like me to do it in as well. So next week we'll be moving on to one of those. So see you then.